Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance. So it's been about 30 hours since I found out um, my mother's dead. Weird feeling. Again, it's a not that I'm sad about it at all. Not that I feel guilty about it at all. It's still a very strange feeling to know the person that gave birth to you is dead. And, you know, it is a pro like, I am processing all this. I mean, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to think about. And it dawned on me how empty my mother's life really was. How empty and meaningless her life really was. Greatly due to who she married. Which is why I said after the birthday video I made last month, a month to the day actually, on that, that I made the... Uh, the death video. I did a video following that on why my father was still worse than my mother. And this obituary proves it. Because not only does this obituary not account for anything in my mother's life. Anything of meaning, anything of value. The per that was never the purpose of the obituary. The entire purpose of the obituary is about is me. Is how do I mention as many people without mentioning me? That's I could see that's the intent. And he still lets his narcissism and his sociopathy and his competitiveness still show through, even in his wife of uh, how long were they even married? Would they get married in 69 of almost 50 years? This is what he has to, sh this is what him, my brother and my ex-wife, this is the best they can come out in the family. This is the best they can come up with. And I didn't realize how bad this was until I read her sister's obituary, who died four days later, her youngest sister's obituary. Laura Schuster, Laura Schuster, 71 of Hasbro Heights on 7 10 18. Do you have a maiden name? Who I'm talking about, the laziness doesn't even have, usually it puts in quotes the maiden name. Laura was a loving wife to Brian, mother to Rita and Carrie Schuster, who is my ex-wife, again, sick, grandmother to Gino, that must be my brother's son, Erin Marie Schuster, sister to Barbara Rampo, that's the middle sister, and the late Virginia Jenny. 2018 and her husband Mario Ficarra. <laughs> Sister-in-law to Ken and Mary Rose Schuster. Ken is my godfather who I was compared to my entire childhood every time something went wrong, every time I made an error in baseball, every time I struck out, every time I got, you just like Kenny, you just like Kenny, you just like Kenny, Kenny Jr. And Adrian and her husband Dwayne, I don't know why he's in parentheses, Phila, and there it is, and there is the evidence of my father's narcissism. I've talked many times how my father will purposely misspell names. My name, my ex-wife's name. It's a power move. That's not a typo. That's what he does. That's him competing with his sister. 
to fuck up her name in an obituary. That's how that's how sociopathic this guy is. And to many nieces and nephews and many friends, like what has she accomplished? What has she done? Who was she? She had an artistic soul and talent to match. She had an artistic soul and talent. No, she was an accomplished stained glass artist who who could have done many, many things. She could draw, she could paint, she could do stained glass. What has become abundantly obvious is I knew this woman better than any of you. You never even tried. This is about me. This is about writing me out. This isn't about memorializing her life. I hate the woman and I could have done a better job of this. The three of you are pathetic. The three of you show your own sociopathy every step of the way. She was a gourmet cook, avid gardener, gardener, and loved her home on Long Beach Island. Had to get in that shore house thing, right? She wasn't a gourmet cook. She was a good cook. She wasn't a gourmet cook. Avid gardener, she grew some tomatoes and basil on the side of the house. Okay, that was maybe maybe four feet long by two feet wide. That 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 was her avid gardening. She grew some tomatoes, some basil, some parsley. That was her avid gardening. Really? Really? She was a friend to all, never hesitating to lend a hand. She will be missed by all who knew and loved her. Like, you could have ripped this all out of a fucking greet, all out of greeting cards. You see how lazy this is? This is nothing. Memorial Mass, Wednesday, 10.30 a.m. Assumption, Woodridge. Arrangements by Kohler. It's all local stuff. It was Laura's wish that in lieu of flowers, donations be made to the patient art program at the John Thoreau Cancer Center. Hmm. Cancer Center, huh? Donations may be made payable to Hackensack University Medical Center in memory of Laura Schuster in the memo line. Checks may be mailed to Hackensack UMC Foundation. Attention, Nancy Kennedy. 160 Essex Street, Suite 101, Lodi. And I hope people would do that. But based on the two comments, the three comments of people who actually gave a shit, no. I doubt it, but I hope it does. I didn't realize, or I didn't realize the bell went off, though. On this, when I went back and I reread this, really, really, really reread this after I read my Aunt Chinny's obituary. Let's see if we can see if who, which obituary was written by people who loved them, who gave a shit about them, who didn't have a different agenda, shall we? For Cara, Ginny, Virginia Ginny. Any Rampo, oh, got the maiden name right. Age 63, was born on April 23rd, 1955, died on July 14th, 2018. Ginny was a loving wife to Mario, the absolute best mother to Rachel and Mark, fiance Sarah, an amazing Mimi to her grandson Mario, sister to Barbara Rampo and the late Laura Schuster, 2018, and her husband Brian Schuster. Ginny was an aunt and cousin to a large extended family who loved her deeply. Ginny and her family attended an Annunciation Church in Wayne, and that is where she became an active member of the choir. Her voice soothed not only the church patrons, but she even sang to patients she had at Chilton Memorial Hospital. 
Gee, this sounds more like an accounting of somebody's life. Doesn't it? She had the ability to take away fear or anxiety in any of the people that crossed her path at the hospital. Ginny will forever be remembered as a sincerely kind person who went out of her way to help others. She loved all forms of artistic expression, but watercoloring painting was her favorite medium. She continued to practice her craft over the years by attending a variety of different art classes. Her family took yearly trips to, to the beach, and that was always the highlight of her summer. Gee, the trips with her family were the, were the highlight of her summer. Not her house. Her family. Do you see the depth that Mark and Rachel and Mario put into this? You morons. You three fucking morons. This is why she kept mommy at a fucking distance. And Mario was smart enough to do that for her, clearly. Ginny and Mario were very good to me when I was a kid. I have some very good memories of them. They took me to my first, they took me to a movie, they took me to see, I remember we went to go see Airplane when I was like a little, little kid and I and I saw the highlights coming out for it. That this, And the plane was, the, I remember the the, 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 the the coming attractions was the plane crashing through the, the big window. I'm like, I want to see that. I didn't even know, they didn't even understand what it was. Like it was like a slapstick comedy. They're like, all right. And they're like, and when we went and saw it and we, I mean, it was the funniest thing we've ever seen at that point. And we talked about that for years. I mean, it was stuff like that they used to do. Ginny, Ginny came over and decorated for my fourth birthday party. When my mother was off fucking off and Virginia was off trying to get out of it. Ginny did that. Mario gave me every fucking baseball glove I ever owned when I was a kid. He'd break him in because he, he was like an avid baseball softball player. He played in all these leagues. And he'd get jerseys and mitts. And suddenly he would give me his mitts that he would break in, that he'd have them broken in. I'm sorry for Ginny. I really am. I really am. I wish she would have not... Buried her head. I wish she would have buried her head in the sand a little bit less. But I'm sorry for Jenny and Mario. She loves searching for seashells with her children. You, you see this? With her children. Ginny's kitchen was always filled with the most delicious aromas of both Italian and Armenian cuisine. I'm not a gourmet cook. Do you, do, do, do you see this? Do you see where one is narcissistic grandstanding and another one is an accounting of one's life, honestly? Ginny will be remembered as an angelic person with the most beautiful and kind heart. The funeral is Friday, June 20th, 2018 at 8.30 a.m. It is currently 8.30 a.m. right now. At the Church of the Annunciation 45. Interment at St. Michael's Cemetery, South Hackensack, in lieu of flowers, donations can be made to the Church of the Annunciation Choir. The Fakara family is in care at a home in Garfield. <clears throat> There's a lot of irony with this. Ginny had breast cancer years ago. And my father took her to every every chemo treatment, everything, because Mario couldn't have this bastard of a boss, wouldn't let him get out of work. My father did all of that, and my mother resented him for it. But he didn't do it out of the kindness of his heart. He did it to build 
build up point, like build up his, you know, his style. And I've talked about this, you know, why they do what they do. They do it for the adulation, for the look like a great guy. And it's odd, all that work and all that resentment my mother had over that. And all that time and effort he put into it. My mother ends up dying of cancer. I'm assuming if that's where it's going. And I'm going to show you why even more I assume it. I can do more than assume it. And even more why they want me nowhere near them. And why they might actually be a little scared. Not physically. Not that I'm going to do something physically or anything like that. But you'll see. And it's something I talked about on the channel. But for them to die within four days of each other. I guarantee you he never did anything for my mother the way he did it for Jenny. The way he would do anything for anyone else. I guarantee it. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So you got one obituary, same family, written by people who want to account for a life honestly and gave a shit, gave a shit about their mother, gave, cared about, loved his wife, loved their mother. Yeah. This shit, you checking boxes. This was about writing me out. And don't think everybody, don't think people who read it don't know it. What do you think? What do you think, Brian? You don't mention me? Like, people are, like, don't know I exist? Of course they know I exist, Brian. I warned you, this is what was going, this is what was going to be my time. When the deaths come and the obituary... This is going to be my time. And I didn't realize how far ahead I really was. I didn't. I didn't. How pathetic this is. How pathetic you and the, really the three, the four of you are. I'm sure you told everybody, Brian, that you reached out for me. Because I, 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 I bet almost, I bet, and if this was my mother on her death, if she was on her deathbed, she would have called out for me. Because she worried about karma. I know she worried about karma. And with all her fucked up and, and all that, she still couldn't stand that I hated her. Did you tell her you reached out for me and I rejected her? Is that what you told the entire family as well? Hey. I wouldn't half blame you if you did. I probably would have rejected it. I can't say. I could sit here and say, yeah, I'd have rejected that shit. And I probably was saying I would have. I don't know. Probably though. Probably I would have. Unless maybe she wanted to apologize. Because when the people do get on their desk, sometimes they do want to apologize. Who knows? Who cares? I don't. I just want to call it out that I know what it is. The empty, empty life of a narcissist. The empty accounting of her life. This is the best you can come up with. Huh? Huh? Hmm, this is the best you can come up with. Three people giving their condolences. Three? Uh, one of them are renters. This person met her in the art class. The cancer art class, so she don't know her that well, that that well. And this person's from high school that reconnected with her on Facebook. 
What a sad, sad life. But you had a house in Long Beach Island. You got a house in Long Beach Island, right? They blame me for this. I know they do. Maybe they have a little bit of a right to. I went back through my text messages with Drunky. August 11th, 2015. My mother's screaming at things I'm saying at my uh, on my YouTube. Calls me up screaming at things I'm saying on my YouTube channel because... Me and her had been communicating. I was using her to try to get to Aaron. I was using her to get in contact with Aaron at times. And then it went, and I couldn't get a hold of her. And my mother's like, you said you were going to shit on my grave and all these things. And I'm like, ah. So daddy found out. And basically I'm like, so daddy found out you were talking to me and giving me access to Aaron. And he basically showed you what you wanted to, what he wanted you to see on my channel. This was my reply. You and my father destroyed me to my core. It happened. It happened that the childhood and continued. It happened in my childhood and continued my adult life. You think I hate you? It's nothing compared to how you've made me feel about myself. I live with this every day. I live with the hurt, the pain, the anger, and the frustration, and have come to the realization that I will live with this forever. But after all that happened in the past, all I wanted when I went through, through the divorce was my mom. But you wouldn't allow that. He's always been number one to you. You'll always choose daddy over everyone. I can only pray one day I'll be able to repair the damage that's been done to Aaron. But I'll say this. You didn't find those videos on your own. I'm sure, he, I'm sure daddy found out you were talking to me and showed you exactly what he wanted you to see. Not that I was hiding the videos from you, obviously, but it's another example of letting yourself be manipulated by him in order to throw me under the bus. So the real question is, what do, I, what do you take responsibility for? I can answer that for you, loving you too much. Standard answer all narcissist abusers use. You're not even original, as my 5,000 <laughs> 5, plus subscribers have shown me you're all alike. But you should be happy almost 100,000 people have heard that phone call for themselves and know what you are. Now well over 200,000. You're out of your mind, living a lie that you have told so many times that you have brainwashed yourself and truly believe your disgusting fantasy. You've lived constantly your entire, you've lied constantly your entire life, even as a child, and it got worse as you became an adult. No one, no one who knows you believes a word you say. As far as Aaron, she's a very happy child when the subject, except when the subject of you comes up. We never say anything negative about you even when I want to tell her nice things pertaining to you, she changes the subject and says she'll talk to Mr. Williams. You have no one to blame for your situation but you, and when you start facing that, you might, you might start getting better. You're going to see how fast this all changed, because this is the same day I found out about the mortgage. Mr. Williams who is Aaron's therapist, Mr. Williams, who recruited her off a Little League diamond, Mr. Williams, who lives down the road, that Mr. Williams, as far as me lying, that's laughable. I wasn't the one sucking and fucking my way all over Hasbro Kites. I wasn't the one causing a scene everywhere I went. I wasn't the one who ran through friends like most people run through water. I wasn't the one bad-mouthing my friends constantly. I wasn't the one beating the child. I wasn't the one constantly putting thermometers up a child's ass unnecessarily. You have to live with who and what you are and the fantasy land you reside in. You're a joke, and now the larger my channel gets, you become a bigger joke and more exposed. Everyone knows who and what you are. You destroyed my child, but that was to be expected when dealing with monsters like you. 
and that's what you were, monsters. Self-absorbed with yourselves and abusive and neglectful to a T. I mean, who else but you would leave a child with a gay guy she met at ShopRite and then laugh when he tells you he had some gay friends over and they were showing me their dicks? You didn't even question to find out what really happened. No, you went on to talk about it like it was some joke in front of the entire family. Not that I care what those losers have to say, and I don't, any of you. Any of you. And I hereby wish cancer back on you. What cancer? The one I already wished on you twice, but you somehow beat. But don't worry, I'm powerful like Virginia. Why do you think bad things keep happening to you? Don't cross an Armenian with karma. You, of all people, should know that. You are crazy. Be careful what you wish for. It might come back to you. I'm not afraid of you. I have Jesus on my side. And you have the devil. I feel sorry for you. Why is it that you narcissists always default to Jesus later in life? You know he hates you, right? You're going straight to hell. I mean, if you don't go to hell, then who does? Based on your Facebook pictures, looks like you're going to be finding out a lot sooner than later anyway. LOL. At least Virginia held it together well into her 70s before she completely went to shit. Huh. You barely made it into your 70s. I guess she was the better woman. Maybe Frank Grassi would have been better off with her. That was her ex-boyfriend, her ex-fiance. And then that's when I found out about the loan modification, about my name being forged. Caliber Home Loans, that was the name of the company. So as soon as I said it, they knew I knew. It's over. I warned you not to sign my name to anything. No boundaries ever. This is exactly what my YouTube channel is about. Now there's going to be severe consequences, I'm sure, for everyone involved. Anybody who doesn't remember, this is when my father signed my name to a loan modification so they could keep Aaron Esso so my ex-wife didn't have to call me. To get my signature because they were withholding any contact from Aaron at that point. This was their game. This is why they did it. This. This is why they signed, the, signed my name to that paperwork. So they can alienate me from Aaron. No one has signed your name to anything. That's the mortgage company that bought your mortgage from the bank in a batch buy. That's her first excuse. I spoke to the company. They have a form with my signature on it. They already referred it to their fraud department. This isn't a joke. And this is where the narcissist tries to make you believe. There's a, like you figure out there's no Santa Claus and they keep trying to lie to you that there is one. That's what this is. Caliber Home Loans, I was with them on the phone for 40 minutes. They confirmed my signature was on the modification. It has nothing to do with, the, with, with a batch buy. I was, on, I was the primary signer on the mortgage to begin with. How does she expect to get a modification without my signature? This is serious. He can't lie his way out of this one. There's proof. Forging somebody's name on bank paperwork is a federal crime. Five to 30 years plus $1 million fine. All Kerry did was apply for a modification. No one signed your name. I thought it was a batch buy. I thought you wanted this mortgage off your back. Now this is where the gaslighting starts. I guess you'd rather have your daughter out on the street. Now my daughter's going to be homeless. Now the guilt. So you got the gaslighting, you got the guilt, and now you got your father didn't sign your name. She still wasn't grasping that like there was paperwork, that there's proof. And this is why I tell you, doesn't matter if there's proof with a narcissist or not. 
They have the paperwork. She's already paying the modification. Didn't you know that? They definitely signed my name. They are already referred to their fraud department. Their fraud department is calling me to confirm that I did not sign the modification. What don't you understand? That's your husband's signature. It's over. And that is his signature. That ain't mine. That's not daddy's signature. And this is what they just deny. It doesn't matter. They just deny it. They deny it. They deny it. They deny it. That's not daddy's signature. In fact, it looks just like yours. It's, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? Anyway, the house was given to Kerry in the divorce. So if she wants to modify it, she can. Except your name is on the mortgage. So then she can't. She had 18 months to get my name off that house. She didn't abide by the terms of the fucking divorce. She was supposed to have my name off it in 18 months. She didn't do that. She's, she's in contempt of the goddamn court order. No, you'd rather have Aaron thrown out on the street. Real and you think she hates you now? Wait till that happens. Sure, for sure she will have nothing to do with you. For sure she'll have nothing to do with. See, you were already withholding my 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 contact with this. Fuck. This is what it was all about. This is how the channel got started, everybody. This is how me taking contributions. And reading stories, this is how this all got started, right here. Right here, this is the start of it all, because I only had 5,000 subs at that point, and maybe 60 videos, 70 videos, tops. Nothing like this. This is what made me close the GoFundMe, start the GoFundMe to go after custody of Aaron. Which I backed off on because I was she begged me. She begged me. I'll give you. I'll give you. Kyle, I'll, uh, I'll let you talk to her. We'll do. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. Please don't take the house. I'm sorry. <sighs> Sucks having to go back through this, but you need to remind yourself what happened, and I need to remind everybody what happened. So before you think I'm some fucking scumbag son of a bitch, I'm not. I'm not. So you want to keep this mortgage good for you. What are you going to pay it with? That paper was only an income verification form for Kerry. There was no fraud and you're not allowed to have. What? Besides, Kerry said that you told her she could sign your name and you... And you want nothing more to do with the mortgage. She swears on Aaron you said this. Please leave me alone. Stop calling, texting, stay off my Facebook page. You're dead to me. See all the, all the story? Like, the mortgage is over. I got off the, just got off the phone with the fraud and fraud department and they're canceling. How could I have told Carrie she could sign it if I haven't spoken to her in months? I made I had made it clear nothing was to be signed in my name. I have text messages to the effect. You can try to scare me off, but you can't. And why would Aaron be in the street? You have two houses. Because it's not about Aaron, it's never has been. You're a phony, you're a liar, and now you're caught, and your husband will be a convicted felon, as will Kerry. And this isn't an income verification, it's a modification agreement. And if you're going to lie, at least know I have all the information in my possession. All I wanted was my kid. You people wouldn't allow it. You all have no one to blame but yourselves. Do you still think I'm a child? Your lies will not get you out of this one. And if I gave Kerry permission to sign it, why did you take a day and a half to finally come back with that excuse? You're a poor liar. How long do you think you'll be able to hold up on the witness stand without falling apart? You're an idiot. You always have been. You always will be. You all, all you had to do was stay out of my relationship with my daughter. But you wouldn't allow it. 
I needed to be punished for getting a divorce. You're going to get exactly what you deserve. I warned you yesterday about karma didn't die. And again, I will warn you, if you lie to the police, they will charge you. This is irrefutable evidence. And tell Kerry she better never swear on my child again over a lie. You people are just disgusting. That's how my signature, that's how I signed my signature for the last 20 years. I am right-handed. So my lettering goes back and to the left. Daddy is left-handed, so his writing goes to the right. Another example of not being respected of what I do for a living. The signatures aren't even close, and that's what the fraud department said. And you and are you seriously going to make Kerry take responsibility for signing this when it's clearly daddy's handwriting? You people are disgusting. Remember, said it looked like my handwriting. You didn't do it. Now, now my ex-wife did it. And you may want to reread your own text messages. First, it was a batch buy from the mortgage company. Then nobody signed my name. Then it was income verification. Now a day and a half later, it was an income. Ver now a day and a half later, I gave her permission. What a joke. That was in August of 2015. In December 28th of 2015, right after the car got totaled, she sends me a screen cap of our conversation here Okay, you have no one to blame for your situation, but you after the car got total trying to rub it in my fucking face. Okay, this is who she is, who she was. Yeah, I sent that to you. What's your point? None, I guess. Just looking for attention as per usual. Besides, you said I was dead to you anyway. So why are you bothering me? No con that was in 2015. No contact with her again until June 1st of 2017 when Bunny Rabbit was all over my fucking timeline. One more post from Bunny Rabbit. I turned this over to sub sub my subscribers. Got it, cunt. That's their shore house with their rental. You were warned. Get a life. I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe one of your followers has turned on you. Fuck off, cunt. You're not worth it. Quit bothering me with your crazy letters and your whore, whore girlfriend calling us. Okay. Bye, cunt. And that is the last communication I ever had with my mother. Okay. Bye, cunt. And I hereby wish cancer back on you. Empty life. Empty life. Obituary written by three people who couldn't give a fuck about her. Three people who couldn't give a fuck about her. I don't even need to do an opposing obituary at this point. I don't even need to. How, I mean, the video I did on her death has got, let's see here. Oh, 2,289 views and 303 comments. Who won? Strange day, strange time. Strange time. The empty, empty life of the narcissist. They die. No one really loves them. Y'all deserve each other. All of you. I can only imagine what's going to happen now. Two giant houses. He just lost his health insurance now that she's dead. 
My ex-wife is a school teacher with a government... Don't try signing my name on anything if you're going to sell that house. Because I'm going to want mines. I'm numb. Not numb out of sadness, just numb in general. I feel good, though. I haven't overeaten since I found out. I kind of think that switch in my head got hit where I got to get myself back in the shape fast, soon. She's gone. And now this channel is your legacy. Your obituary with three comments and three three condolences. Over 200,000 people already have heard the craziness that is her. And she is gone from this earth. But this channel, that recording, goes on forever. In a hundred years when we're all gone and that video and that thing is still floating around, it's not going to matter what you wrote anyway. Is it? Checkmate. I will probably be back Monday uh, with, uh, with narcissism videos. I just want to take the weekend. We're going to be in Charlene. We're going to go to the beach, do some stuff. <clears throat> Um, you know, just, it's a weird time, weird feeling, weird feeling. So if you want to get in the queue, if you want to make a contribution, if you believe in the channel and you want to keep the channel supported, growing and successful, this channel survives a hundred percent on contributions from all of you guys. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here. And you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.